getting this. Don't stop. <laughs> Ready? Look, if, it was, if it was up to me, I'd be in her ass right now. Oh, you got that bit. <laughs> This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by the quote Clarissa Shields. Clarissa, you must be getting used to this sort of fanfare by now. Is this different from any of the others? Um, this fight has a little bit more story on it, you know, a little bit more eyes. People are very interested in this fight. I was just shocked that when we got the call that it was at the O2 Arena, I was like, yes, you know, because fighting her in Newcastle was like making it seem like she was yeah, the A side, and it was like, no, like, I'm I'm the A side for sure, but I'm like, this fight is big enough to be in London, and I already knew that, you know, but I feel like they didn't know that till after I won in Cardiff. When I won in Cardiff and they seen the fans going crazy and they seen how big it did online and just her getting in, her talking trash up on the side of the ring, people seen that uh, this is this is it. This is going to be one of the – most most exciting fights ever and it's and it's too big for newcastle and when i spoke to you before we were talking about things you've still got left to achieve in your career one of them back then was that you wanted to be undisputed at two weights you've now done that how big is this that you've inspired the first ever as far as i'm aware all female show on uk soil um that's that's exciting you know and like i said where i come from you know flint michigan you know, I come from where, like, right now, the we have been dealing with the water crisis for eight years. And and that's why I wear my hair blue when I fight, to bring awareness to that. But to come from where I, where I come from and to grow up poor and to fight, really, literally fight my way to the top, I think it's just so great, you know, that, that I'm as great as I think I am. You know, that I am a star and that I'm a great fighter and, and that I'll take on any any challenge and, and like I said I've always told people that I'm not scared of no one and I'm not scared of a country or or the or the fans but I'll come and fight whatever against whoever I'm just happy that the UK fans are are accepting me and I believe we're going to have a packed house at the O2 Arena September 10th now you seem pretty uh, irritated by Savannah up there on the stage and just before we started this interview or as we started you said you'd beat her ass right now if you could what is it about her that you dislike so much? Because you're the one that's come out with more success. Normally, you'd be the person kind of moving on, not really caring. She'd be yapping at your heels. But you seem to really dislike her also. She do all the yapping online. But then when she see me face to face, it's, it's the opposite. And I'm like, I want you to say to me what you said to me online. I want you to try to bully me in person like you try to bully me online. So I can show you that I'm not for no games. I'm not... I'm not scared of her. She doesn't intimidate me. I don't breathe different. She's all fidgeting and, and you know, rocking in the chair. Her nerves are bad. I'm good. You know, but just the dislike comes from her trying to take away from my accomplishment. She thinks that she's better than me. You know, she feels like, oh, you wouldn't you wouldn't have accomplished anything if if I would have been given an opportunity. And that's not and that's not true. I have fought against some very, very hard girls. Even being being knocked down by Hannah Gabriel's up in the first round. And what I do, I got back up and still won the fight. Unanimous decision. So when you when you have those kind of fights fighting against a Christina Hammer who's 21 and 0 with 10 knockouts and you're only 7 and 0 for the undisputed championship and now you become 8 and 0 by beating her. That's what I'm that's what I'm talking about. Like that's a challenge. And I was able to do that. But for her to say if she would have fought those girls that she would have beat them and she can be three-time division world world uh world a champ. That's where my dislike comes from, her, comes from her at because it's like, no, you can't. No, you cannot do what I've done. That's why since I lost 2012, three months later, I won the Olympics and you lost. 2014, I won the world championships. 2016, I won the world championships. 2016, I won the Olympics again. And now I'm a 12-time world champion. And here you are looming in the back talking about, oh, you but you could have done it if you would have been given the opportunity. That's not, that's not true. When you lost that fight, and I know it was contentious, the scorecards way back when, did that give you any sort of renewed uh, determination and resilience in terms of getting to the top and where you've become? I'm not saying she's done you a favor necessarily, but has that defeat inspired you? If losing don't make you learn something, something wrong with you. 
If losing don't ignite a fire in you, something's wrong. Like, I have a problem with fighters that lose and don't cry. We see it all the time, these mailboxes, like they just lose and, and they be, some of them are gracious. Um, I'm not saying not, not be sportsmanlike, but if you really wanted, wanted something and you lose, it hurts and it ignites a fire in you. And, and that fire from my loss, 2012, still is in me. And that's why I'm here and I'm gonna be there. How much of her confidence going into this fight do you think stems from that one result as an amateur when you were 17? No idea. It's probably all her confidence because if she's watching the film now and seeing how I box now and how smart I am now, she knows it's, a, it's two different fighters. She said up there, you haven't improved, which seems crazy considering how long ago it was and everything you've achieved. What, what would be your response to that? When we were face to face doing the behind the gloves yesterday, she said, I improved, but I've gotten a lot better. But when we get in front of the fans and we're not face to face, now I haven't improved. I told her yesterday, she, she hasn't improved and she hasn't. She's still slow. The only thing that's changed is that now she's a knockout artist. But in the amateurs, she was 60 wins, 16 losses, zero wins by knockout. How much does this fight mean to you personally? I know it might not go up there with winning an undisputed title the first time or even the second time, but because of the history between you, what does it mean to you on a personal level? See, if, if I could be the person that I am inside the ring every day, I would, because that's who I truly am. Outside the ring, I have to be nice and loving and caring, and sometimes that gets on my nerves. You know, so it's more of a, I don't like how she disrespected me personally, because she said things about me, about my hair, just trying to, about my butt, talking about that my butt is big, because she don't got no booty. You know, but it's like she tries to come at me as a as a person and she don't have anything to come at me with with boxing. But inside the ring, I'm not gonna think about none of that. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go in there and do my job. I am really, really focused for this fight. Um, and I've been wanting this fight for a long time. And you're not gonna hear any excuses from me. Looking further ahead, obviously last time we spoke, I asked you what was left to achieve. Should you come out on top against Savannah in this grudge match, is what a lot of people are calling it. What is left to achieve? Is it more on the MMA side? Yeah. Um, I have the fight with Savannah Marshall. Then right after I have an MMA fight with, yeah. with the PFL. And then next year I may have one boxing match and then the rest of the year will be PFL because I'm going to do the PFL tournament and try to win a million dollars. Then 2024, I'm getting married. Congratulations. And uh, I'm still going to come back to box 2024 and box a lot that year. Live off my stardom from being Savannah Marshall. And um, 2025, I'll be having some kids. <laughs> Two at a time, actually. <laughs> we already agreed on it. Two Your history of twins, Avil. <laughs> you just decided. Nah, I know we're going to have to. I've been, I've been praying to God about it. <laughs> Give a shout out to your fiance. Congratulations, by the way. Hey, baby. Love you. <laughs> That's fiance Tony. Y'all know who it is. Don't, don't play no games. Brilliant. Really, really appreciate your time. Can't wait to see the fight. Thank you. This is how you shake a hand. We went to yeah. shake hands yesterday, and they're like, you want to shake hands, you want to shake hands. And it's the man of like, you want to shake hands? I'm like, bro, you weird. You want to shake hands, bro, you can shake hands. So she grabs my hand like this, take my hand. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least you didn't kiss it. Better than both. That would have been worth it. <laughs>